we got Maurizio, the founder of Hydrocore, with us today. He is San Diego based, a good friend of mine that I met maybe two years ago. Uh, he's Italian, so you probably understand three out of 10 words that he says, but he's a good guy. He's a smart guy, and I'm looking forward to talking to him. Maurizio, uh, you, how long ago did you come up with the idea for the Hydrocore? Uh, um, man, the idea came up probably. Ten years ago, I guess. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. Uh, it just was like you know, an iCloud idea. <laughs> yeah. Then, then on a piece of paper. But uh, you know, the, going from the idea to execute the idea—that's all another story. That you know, some people, any, anyone can say, "Oh, I want to go to the moon," but you got to build a fucking rocket, you know. And uh, that's that were required, like you know. Uh, research uh, and mistakes and connection there's all other level of uh, of uh, of uh, understanding that some people you know i mean uh, i, I want to say uh, you know some people now call me inventor because i invented uh, you know a piece of plastic with water inside but uh, you know but uh, the thing is uh, a lot of people come to me and say hey you know how you come up with the idea you know when you put them in front of all the difficulty, all the entire process and everything, they, they kind of, you know, look at me like, you know, I'm trying to discourage them, but, you know, I went through that. I understand, I know what it takes, not just financially. The problem about executing is not a financial problem, is a, is a effort, dedication, passion, because uh, a, a, any idea you have, hardly you're going to find someone that uh, love your idea <laughs> the first thing they're going to laugh at you they're going to think it's stupid and then you know when you are in the process they're going to say uh, then you know they want the people want to see the success they want to see right away a full idea they are not uh, willing to wait and uh, work with you or support you unless they see right away the success, you know? Uh, that, that's the weird, the, the weird feeling for a person they're trying to execute something is that, you know, people want to put you down. People, they're going to say no. People are going to laugh at you. There's a lot of things going on. And most of the time they come from people around you, trust me, from family member, friend, you know, <laughs> that's the, less, the, the, the least supportive people. <laughs> I think I've given you shit on one of your inventions. I've seen like four of them. I've liked three out of the four of one of them. I was like, this one I don't know about. This one I don't think you need to make. <laughs> That's why I need you around. Because, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, it's fun because uh, 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 the negativity, you know, obviously, you know, there's a way to turn negativity. It's the people think of negativity is a negativity. No, but you always can switch. I mean, it's energy, right? See, positive energy, negative energy. That's what we say, right? Is energy. So why don't you use that energy your advantage and the fuel to move forward instead of using it as a way to put you down, right? And, you know, I, actually, yeah, Nathan, it was like, you know, I don't know, last year or something like that, I remember he came to my house. I was working on a, on a an idea, right? And <laughs> he said, I don't know. I just, eh, why, no, I don't know. I don't like it, blah, blah, things like that. And, you know, I kind of laugh, you know, just to say, oh, I, I need that. I, say, I told him, oh, I needed that because I needed some negativity. You know, you're the first person I show him. This is cool. This is cool. You know, and, and uh, actually now I execute the idea. I will come uh, on the market with this new invention. Uh, I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you follow me, if you know me or whatever. But uh, actually is a kind of, you know, hydrocore. You know what is hydrocore? Yes. Yeah. So, so actually it's another water-filled product. It's like a donut that you can put a bell. So it's like a, a weighted uh, a bumper plate uh, with water, actually. That's what it is. Yeah, I know? think I saw somebody using it kind of like a landmine setup, right? Uh, yeah, that's one, of, that's one of the way you can use it. Yeah. Yeah, what are some other ways that you would see people use it? You can use it as a mace. You can attach to a mace. So you can screw on a mace. I don't know if you know edX, edX. Yep. Those are yep. just yeah so you can attach to the edX which is the easy way you just buy an edX if you have one you attach there it's very simple fast to do it or you can build a you know a, a hand a, a mace handle 
You can use a uh, attached to a rope, like a flow rope. I don't know if you're familiar with the flow rope. You can put in a flow rope and then use as a, the end of the flow rope, you know, kind of, you know, let's say a parabell flow rope, but weighted, you know, weight. You can use just by himself. The cool things about using by himself is uh, that, uh, you know, whatever we usually train or we do, there's always a, a grip. It can be a convenient grip, can be a familiar grip, a weird grip, whatever, right? You know, but in the gym specifically, always we grip like this, right? Whatever we do, we grip like this. It can be thicker, smaller, whatever, you know, but always we do this. So the reason why I didn't put any type of a handle on the product, because people say, oh, why you don't put handle? Because you are going to keep doing what you always do. And like this, you have to just clasp and use like, you know, the, the palm of your handle like this instead of gripping. Matter of fact, when I was in Italy, there was a friend of mine, I uh, brought the product in Italy. I was testing with some friend just to see feedback and idea. And there was a friend of mine, he got injury doing wakeboarding, which, you know, you do this. So you have a lucky, always an angle, let's say the 45, 45, 90 degree angle of your arm. And he got like, you know, a, a, a injury while he was doing wakeboard. So he could, and the, the, the pain was when he was gripping something, obviously, you know, was gripping. So I, I told him, hey, let's try to use this one. I, we did a full workout. He just doing this. It was perfectly fine. And he said, oh, I cannot do anything because anything I have to do grip, even like just grabbing a, a, a soda can hurt my elbow. But when he was doing this, he felt perfectly fine. I like what you were talking about with the, like basically the open hand grip or the necessity to compress the object in order to hold on to it versus only compressing it in the fist. Um, it's something that's intuitively felt much better for me whenever I'm doing like any kind of chess work is just to like sandwich something between my hands first and try to get that like connection into my body before I try yeah. to do anything around bar. Uh, Nathan, has that kind of been your experience? We, we obviously have talked about grip and trying to get a more full, like kind of sensation from the shoulder with the grip. Um, but there's a lot of benefit, right? To just open hand squeezing. What you're experiencing with that is like more uh, presented load bearing. Like you're not just holding it where you can tense. You're holding it through the chain better. So you're managing better proximal load, you're managing better abdominal load, and you're equivocated because you have to uh, manage forces more globally in that circumstance, you're making it so that you're bracing more proactively. So it makes it safer to the brain because the brain is working around an objective framework of flexion as opposed to there being like components of flexion littered throughout the body. And then you're trying to justify getting big from those points. Um, it makes it easier for you to perceive how big you are when you do something like that. And that's what I really valuable, what I think is really valuable for doing like isometrics. Cause you're oftentimes in a position that makes you bigger and less like contractile around something. Um, well, I mean, I will say uh, this is a, uh, this is interesting. Like the other day I was watching this video, you know, the strong man competition and they did this weird competition. There was this, this rock, usually, you know, the rock they lift is like around the well-rounded, you know, different weight or circumferences, right. But they all rounded. So the competition was about carrying this weird shape rock for it was three meters, three mm -hmm. fucking meters. It was exactly the same weight of they usually lift, but the shape was so fucking weird uh, and they had to kind of, you know, figure out and that's where the problem comes when you have to figure out how to do shit because you go outside from your comfort zone. There's no handle. It's not the things you're usually doing. Then there's failure, right? So what the one guy was able, this weird rock, but he was basically what he was doing he was hugging and squeezing instead of trying to find the grip. So mm -hmm. even if the rock had some weird shape and the other one, they're trying to kind of, you know, put your f fingertips inside on things. The only guy was like using the entire body to crawl and grab around this rock. I mean, at the end, he failed like really a few inches from, it was like, you know, I don't know, $5,000 price, something like that, you know, and he failed at the end. But, you know, he was so fucking hard. You can see in the face, and we are talking about people that, you see this strong man that can lift like a truck, you know, like right? And it was nothing different or, or, or uh, weighted more than they're usually doing. 
in the gym, everything's ergonomic or aesthetically built. So it frames to your, your hands, it frames to your environment, same with like shoes or uh, like a steering wheel or something. It's fitted for how you are shaped. Uh, and that does not allow for bracing. It allows for uh, tension, like guided tension, but it doesn't allow for that like uh, reactive or reflexive motion. That if you're tripping, for example, and you've fallen out of your structure, how do you once again reclaim structure? How do you bring yourself back to it? Uh, that kind of just prefaces uh, being hand driven, being foot driven. Uh, and the more that you can do stuff that allows for your hands to be big, like generally, if you're, if you're using your hands in a big objective, like a palming a basketball way, you're probably going to feel so adequate in your brain. You're going to probably have so much access to your neurology that I, I doubt very many things will make it so that you're not building muscle. So Mauricio, who do you think the hydrocore system um, benefits like the most? Are there particular athletes or particular sports that like this really makes sense for them to be training with this kind of like uh, not predictable stimulus? Well, I mean, that's the thing, you know, when, uh, when uh, uh, you put out a product, I mean, you see, I've seen before I, I put out the hydrocore, you know, there's so many products. They always, uh, people like to think, or coaches like to think, oh, this will be good for golf. Oh, this will be good for wrestling. Oh, this will be good for swimming, right? But it's just bullshit, you know? I mean, even if you just one movement, one movement or the tool you're using can benefit a specific athlete or a old person or a kid, it all is good, useful, right? You know, you can use it one time. I'm sure, you know, uh, Nathan, he, he, he use hydrocore. He use it for some specific things and, you know, specific time of the training. And he don't use it all the time. It's kind of a myth believing that, you know, a tool can be used all the time in all different ways. You know, I mean, it's cool. It's fun. Uh, it can be psychologically boring. Always use the same tool, the same modality. That's, you know, as a coach that you're always trying to stimulate, you know, the brain of your client all the time, because, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the science probably Nathan put inside uh, the specific uh, movement or, or a product uh, or whatever, the client is not interested. You don't fucking care about the science. You know, in, in, my, in, my, in my career of a trainer, I, I, one time, one probably one time a client asked about my certification or asked me the science behind the movement you know they they don't care they don't need that right so i i don't believe uh, there is a specific you know category that using obviously me being around you know fighter all the time i use in that modality a lot they benefit they love it you know because it's also it's easy to use on the mat you know uh, is it transportable? You can adjust quick the weight, so don't need a lot of you know investment for the matter. But uh, uh, I mean, I develop different kind of uh, uh, movement or modality that can uh, be used just for uh, one time, just to create a link. Uh, I'll do an example. It's easy for me to you know give you an example. For instance, you know in a deadlifting or a clean or snatch with a barbell, you know. I'm using the bag to create more time under tension, you know, then, and then it create a link from uh, uh, what I realized that there was a big gap between the stick, the broomstick and the bar. So there's the broomstick, you know, there's a teaching tool at the gym and there is the bar, the barbell before you load the bar, right? So what I'm doing, I like to put in between the stick and the bar, the bag, to, to teach, address some stuff. Some stuff also, also Nathan showed me very interesting. He, he, he used the, the handle of hydrocore put under the feet to create like, you know, the spreading rug feeling. The first you know, time everybody, I did that, yeah, yeah, you, you, you told me that, I remember that. So the, the, the spreading, because uh, one thing is say one, one thing is like saying, one thing understanding and put the thing, I mean, we can do the example, you know, we want is say, oh, imagine like you spread in the rug. I mean, he does probably the second that you say, after three seconds, he doesn't do anymore. But if you give something under his feet that he give that feeling, the sensation of the feedback, if you really put the rug, 
under the feet. He worked better than, say, imagine a rug, right? Totally. So he, 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 he uh, used the handle hydro core, very smart idea. So putting the handle, put the feet in between like the two balls, it's physically spreading. So you feel the little discomfort when you do this, like the pressure here. So the pressure here go as a feedback, a neurologic feedback in your brain. So when you do like the 10 times and you remove the handle, you still have the feedback, right? So you need something, you know, physically something. If I'm telling you all the, imagine you're holding a cup, I say, this is stupid. You know, I'm holding a cup for three seconds. I say, man, this is stupid. But if you give him a cup, that's another story to hold, right? So that's, that's the thing. Uh, so that's why I, I like it to use a lot, for instance, when I go to, to, to gym, that's like the thing I like to do it. And I'm sure oh, you guys do the same, Nathan does the same. Depending on the environment I'm working, I'm using specific type of uh, uh, teaching method or language or, or example to use hydrocore. I mean, if I'm not in a, in a, in a jiu-jitsu academy, I, 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 ne I never talk about jiu-jitsu fighting. I don't, I don't do things like that. If I'm in a gym that specifically is uh, revolved around the CrossFit or lifting, so then I try to use hydrocore in a way that can be very useful to bring the client to the next level. It's less intimidating than a bar. So doing a clean or a snatch with hydrocore is less intimidating for some people. And then we go back again, you know, that uh, 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 how to stimulate the brain to do specific things using tools that are simple and not intimidating. So that's what I'm using. And the coach benefits from that. So I wanted my product to be used in a different way. And maybe, again, just one movement, you know, just one time. But, you know, there, 10 minutes you're going to use the product, you're going to gonna flatten the learning curve that maybe require weeks or months. I don't know if it makes sense sometimes to say. And then, you know, like this, you know, you win because you can go back and forth, can be used as a warm-up tool to do clean and snatches. And then when your brain metabolizes, you know, it's more like a... a a brain warm up, then a muscular warm up, you know? So your brain metabolizes the movement with less intimidation, then you go to the bar. So that's what I like to do or use in a specific, you know, environment or with a specific type of coach. Then say, oh, this is good for golf. I mean, for instance, the arm throw, which is a movement that people do all the time with the bag, right? You know, oh, people see me doing at the beach. Oh, I do golf. That would be for, good for golf. Yes, probably you will use that movement just you know, to warm up or to address some unbalance in your body because you always do one side, you always hit one side. So maybe you can do like a thousand times the other side. So at least you train the other side, but the rest you probably will never use it again, right? And it's, it's fine. And that's fine. You know, there's tools I have. I just use, you know, one time a month because I need like, you know, that tool there, you know, to do one specific things. So, but the, uh, living in a, in a, you know, the, the myth that uh, uh, one tool, that's the only tool you're going to use for the rest of your life is so good. That's what, the, you know, the fitness industry try to sell, the commercial and TV try to sell. That's the tool they sell is the best that you don't need anything else. You know, tools that complement each other, you know, and people need to play this tools roulette sometimes or workout roulette in order to understand where they at, what they needed, you know, that way we come in, you know, we play different roles. We use different tools till we find, okay, the person, Hey man, that that's, that's your destiny. That's what you're going to do. You love these things. It's all about stimulating the brain and then, you know, let them do other stuff and other stuff here, there, you know, that, that's what it is. I think uh, one of the best qualities about the hydrocore is the fact that it doesn't come with a predictability that you're going to uh, like automatically uh, abide a practice routine of motion for. So when you're adjusting to it, you're essentially adjusting to the same way your body adjusts to moving really fast when there's about a, a bunch of fluids moving around the inside of your body. Um, but the I think the value, the real value comes from the lack of predictability when people who have a tendency to do stuff that's very fixed they either move within that fixed pattern well or they start to resist that pattern where you might see some people doing a lot of the shoulder raise or the chest push forward like they're trying to activate muscles by way of moving their spine and the rib cage into it 
one thing that won't happen because you're obviously not catching something solid is your tissue won't tense and lock with the hydrocore. And so if someone is habited to being really fixated on how they work out, practicing the hydrocore for two weeks to a month could very well be the thing that allows for them to build muscle again or to sleep again or to do whatever because their neurology isn't so fixated on the specificity of motion. Their brain isn't like we can only move within these parameters because for some reason, fitness at, at present is like, you have to do this this way. If you don't do it this way, you're going to be bordering like damage or bordering injury. When in actuality, uh, if you look back at like some of the most great physiques historically, you look back at a time period before uh, technology and you'll see that those awkward weights you saw that strong men carrying is essentially how Greece defined their statues. Like the reason why Grecian statues are the way they are is because they didn't have ergonomic weights. They didn't have something that was convenient. They'd pick up a sheep or they'd pick up a cow. They'd pick up some rocks and they'd walk a hill with it. And that would be work related. That would be survival related. But at the end of the day, they're doing something that shit's moving on you. You know, <laughs> you don't have the ability to be like, I'm going to walk like this and not have any force move through. Like you can't show people how you want to look before you have the tissue used to getting beat up and getting you there. And that's going to be like, Lifting is super important, but diluting force is super important comparatively. Like the best lifting exercise is probably sprinting because you're running with five times body weight running through your body. Now, imagine if you can't run, if you can't mobilize super well, having the hydrocore increase your body weight at different intervals is going to be huge for that. It's going to be almost like tripping and preventing yourself from falling. It's going to almost be like being bumped into and not stumbling. It's going to be bracing without having to be perfectly fixed. And that's honestly one of the most reflexive. That's what I really loved about it. And that's what I really love about it is that it teaches reflex without having to teach perfection. Well, one, one important thing, you know, that's the feedback I get from people all the time. It's something that, you know, it's something that you don't realize till the people tell you, right? You know, your brain kind of, you know, perceive that, but, uh, you you don't realize to the person uh, oh i never thought about that is the sound of the water you know yeah. because at the end of the day we are made out of emotion right and most of people say man it's so cool to to have this sound this sound the sound of the water and, and i didn't realize that till the moment i start like you know thinking about it how for, for instance i run a lot with the bag and they feel this sloshing in my ear it's so freaking cool right it's like being next to the ocean, the water. I mean, as a matter of fact, you know, the sound of the water in general, you know, whatever the type of source is, if a water for a pool or ocean, you know, it give a different, you know, stimulus in your brain, right? And so some people say, man, I just like it because I like to hear the sound. They probably, they don't do a lot, you know, they don't like, you know, a crazy workout, you know, gym people, you know, but they say, man, just like doing that thing for 10 minutes at home, I, the sound, you know, I love it. You know, it just, just another, another thing that, you know, they, they notice, uh, they like to tell me all the time. Probably that's the thing they, they tell me all the time, you know, instead of say, oh, I did this, I did that. Say, oh, I love the sound of the water, you know. Yeah. Well, that yeah. sound comes, <clears throat> that sound comes with a very like physical feeling of force at the same time so you're not just hearing something you're feeling what you're hearing and you're kind of linking these sensory systems in a way that you probably wouldn't do unless you like play the drums or like have some kind of musical like experience right yeah yeah it's true it's true and and and, and uh, it's interesting because at the beginning when i started releasing i didn't get back then uh, uh, when I released like, the first teaser video about HydroCore, I didn't have the, the deal with on it yet. You know, it was kind of, you know, just testing, you know, the, the, the audience to see what people thinking about it, right? You know, uh, obviously a lot of people thought it was stupid <laughs> at the beginning, like, you know, like the bad comment on social media were like, oh. Uh, so there was this scientist, they can't, I don't know if I told this story, uh, Nathan, a scientist contacted me and uh it was six years ago something like that five six i don't know and uh, he contacted me and then he said oh man the your the, the tool i never seen such a thing it's so cool can i call you and i said okay then he called me 
and he said, oh, I'm a scientist. I wrote this book, uh, Blue Mind. The name of the book is Blue Mind. I don't know if you read it, if you've read this book. Uh, Jay Wallace, uh, Wallace is his name. And uh, the book basically, there's a book I suggest to anyone that they start training with HydroCore because uh, basically address all this feeling, this emotion that the water can, you know, uh, 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 release, your brain can release, you know, while you are around the source of water, how the water can heal. In matter of fact, you know, back then he asked me, say, why we don't do like a workshop together? Because he does this seminar, he help uh, 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 veterans, you know, to, to recover, you know, from, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress after war, things like that, uh, uh, using the water sound or uh, uh, helping them like go in the water, uh, you know, learning how to surf and things like that. And back then, really, I didn't get it because I had to say, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm, I'm capable to do such a thing, you know, using the language of thing, you know, then I say, oh, I, I don't know, I don't feel ready, maybe we can call it later on and things like that. Now I wrote another book always about, you know, the healing, uh, but in, I mean, the book just blowed out of Amazon. And, uh, you know, I met him when he just released the book, like literally like one week after he released the book, it was he probably sold like two. Now he sold millions, right? But that was interesting, you know. Yeah, I, I agree with water being a very healing element. I mean, I grew up in San Diego and, uh, I didn't spend as much time at the beach until uh, after my most recent concussion. And I think this is just a, a funny argument because most people, when they're doing ice baths, they're really stepping into water and it's uh, a hugely reductive environment for a lot of uh, tension. So in doing that repeatedly and then also applying the cold, you're essentially bringing to mind the immediacy of stress that you'd like to resolve but the ocean is the best thing for that. Like there's oh, no absolutely. comparison in the entire world because even if it's warm, you're going into something that's charged, you're going into something that's moving and you're going into something that's also exposed to the sun. So there's this collective of things that doesn't take you out of how you are to tell you this is how you want to be. It's just a way easier environment to be present. I don't like <laughs> ice baths for most people trying to resolve stress. I like it for a, like a, a, like a quarter of the people trying to do it because most people still don't have the insulary means or the stress proactive or preventative means to like reduce the harmful effects or like the muscle suppressive, the, um, uh, shoot. Uh, if their body's not willed for it, there's likely going to be a problematic stress response. So that's why. Hey, Nathan, remember the Haitian dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, the guy was having a There's panic a attack. perfect example. He was dying you know i told data and i said so so there was a this uh e event they did the here in san diego and uh this guy put together this workout with the, there was a presentation a new product like you know an ice tank inflatable ice tank blah blah but you know that's not the point the point was that at the end of the workout we went all inside the ice tank right you know for different reasons people go from this for a reason no you know and there was this asian kid you know <laughs> he went in man he start freaking out. He start like dumping. I mean, he was just like, you know, a mess. So I went for a few seconds next to him, whispering to calm down, think, breathe, blah, blah. I mean, nothing was working. Then he came in, the guy that, you know, owned the tank, tried. They pulled him out. Probably took like, you know, 30 minutes him to recover. Yeah, I told mentally. them they had to put him in the sun. Like, they, no, he was fucked. So the, the problem is, it's a great product. I, I'm, I'm, I'm friendly with the guys that started, I'm at least friends with their cousin. Um, shoot, I forget the... Chris, uh, the church. The church yeah, cousin. Uh, but I forgot the name of the product. Um, uh, theory, Josh Church and Rob. Theory uh, something, Theory Lab. Yeah, Theory Labs. Yeah, uh, Edge Theory. theory. Lab. Edge Theory Lab, yeah. Uh, they have this inflatable uh, tank, and I think it's honestly one of the best... Uh, uh, ice baths I've seen. I think it's a great uh, utility for someone that's going to have like uh, a team worth of players and then throwing them on product, something yeah. they can travel with. Uh, I think that a lot of people have the misnomer that ice baths are good for everyone and they are most definitely not. 
they're something that need to be tested uh, respective of the person's stress tolerance. And I could see, I knew for a fact before this person had gone near the ice that they were not qualified for it. Because the way that he was doing the sled push was so forceful. It was so jerky. It, you could clearly see this person did not have a clear conduit between his brain and his body. He had to almost like yell through the channels and you could see like the, the startle he was giving himself. And then when he gets in the water and someone's like, yeah, this is going to help you uh, realize your rest and digest. You're going to have the, all this. It doesn't automatically happen. It's a challenge. It's a stress. Yeah. It's an active yeah. and threatening environment for you to be like, okay, I have two options. I can pay attention to how I feel. I can try to feel a certain way. Most people try to feel a certain way, not the way to do it. Pay attention to how you feel. You'll either assess, I am well stressed in this environment, or I have these things that I'm really good at. You do not want to be in the ice bath focusing on how cold you aren't. You want to focus on how warm you can be. Because the idea is your ability to withstand that threshold is your ability to insulate. And if you look at Wim Hof, the guy that's most renowned for insulation, the reason why he can keep his core temperature is because of his intercostals, his ribs, space between his ribs, they big and tense all the time or super saturated with blood flow and heat that wherever he goes, he's bringing a jacket. And so that jacket insulates his organs. It insulates his, it makes his blood flow more concurrent with whatever he's doing. So his heart is pumping an actual fuel source. If you have that, awesome. Go into whatever environment you want and test yourself. If you do not have that, you got to work with your mind. You got to work with your breathing. You got to work with your stimulus or your sensory input from proprioception and interoception and figure out why it is your body doesn't like doing what you tell it to. Why it doesn't like doing the things that bring you a bunch of feedback or a bunch of input. I can tell you definitively yeah. when I went into that ice bath, that was the first time because I'd spent the last two years developing a breathing structure, a breathing program. I went in and I was like smiling because I was like, why is it so warm? And <laughs> obviously it wasn't warm. It was just that I'm insulated now. I can retain heat in a way that I never could before and I can stay relaxed during it. So I was like, oh, this is not nearly as bad as what I expected because I was nervous. I'd been in a bunch growing up and none of them were nice. <laughs> but that one was. Yeah, there was, a, there was an interesting, uh, uh, I mean, uh, from my perspective, you know, going into the ice bath, he, he, he just challenged me mentally, you know, the focus, the breathing. Uh, I, I, I don't do it because I want to recover my muscle. I, I don't care. I mean, I, I, I don't believe that Wim Hof does that because he want to recover his muscle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't, don't care really about that. Out. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, that's a selling point. I saw that's a fucking selling point for the thing, you know, all the time. When the gym organized those kind of things, oh, this is going to help record. They always do after the workout. They always work out first and they do their thing. You know, yeah. I would do before. I would do like when you fucking not before, expecting, just walk into the gym, jump in. You know, I, that's what I would do it. <laughs> I would do it before and then I'd warm up in between. So there'd be a purpose yeah. or an ac application of the warm up. The thing I don't like about um, getting into the mix of breath work for recovery is that most people aren't paying attention to their recovery. They're paying attention to their utility of their body. So even if they're not recovered, they're like, I want this to come out of the body. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this. For example, there's another one that uh, stylistically, it's cool. Uh, I just don't think it's built for everyone. Uh, Landmine is super, super fast paced and input oriented. I'm very coordinated. I'm athletic. But the rate at which they were doing it was withdrawing like the quality of my whatever. And I wasn't able to sensorily pick up on what I was doing. I was trying to have to like interrupt my mechanism to be able to like, no, get it like this, get it like this. And flow, like rope flow, is the opposite of that and that allows for you to just be like it's it's non-threatening i can move around it and it's nice there needs to be an application of people pacing at the rhythm that they internally create not the rhythm that they experience so like ben mentioned drums earlier having an intrinsic wherewithal for being able to like perturbate and like feel the repercussion so it's not just i'm hitting this but i feel it bounce back at me when you start to run like that you're no longer running with it screaming in your ears you're running with it, bouncing and springboarding through your body. There needs to be a give and a take. And respect of the ice bath, the give needs to be I'm diluting or dispersing heat through my, my organs. 
if your organs get hot, your hands and feet aren't an issue because your organs are the supply. So you'll be inundated with a bunch of good information and then you can start managing your stress. But your stress response, if it doesn't have a tooling system to reduce the input threat, it doesn't make you more stress tolerant. It just makes you more able to decide how to react when you're stressed out. And so every stressful environment is going to be a decision as opposed to your body knowing how to respond to it without having to exhibit nine different times the uh, nine times the energy to be like, this is how we do it. This is how we're going to control this is how we're going to control this. We don't do that. We need to react reflexively and be able to survive conditions. So if it's cold, we need to be able to get hot. If it's hot, we need to be able to vent our tissue and sweat and depreciate the amount of heat. And if we're not doing that, more than likely, we're fixated in environments that are bleeding the heat or the attention from our brain and our nervous system. Yeah, so that's a that's a good point. I mean, you know what I think I remember when I was a little kid, you know, we used to, you know, windsurfing, kite surfing. Windsurf back then it was windsurfing and surfing. And uh, because, you know, obviously, I don't know, they had a lot of money and a wetsuit cost a lot of money, you know. Yeah, totally. And so I, I had this. Yeah, when I was a little kid, so nobody, nobody of us had a wetsuit. There was a privilege. Also, there was not a, a store selling wetsuit. And, uh, uh, you know, if we had one, it was all broken, you know, with water getting in from everywhere. And I remember, you know, uh, we used to go in the water with our wetsuit, even November, December, go in the yeah. water. And, you know, and then I had this long, I don't know if you know, it was a long john. A long john is like, you know, the wetsuit, but, you know, it's open here. Basically, mm -hmm. every water go in, go out. <laughs> so it's, it's like no having, right? You know, just protect a little bit. And uh, then uh, what I realized when I started using the wetsuit, that uh, my, my performance was less effective because, you know, when I was in the water, I was getting you. I mean, like you say, the environment, I was like adjusting with the environment, right? Yeah. And what Sweetie, what does, does alpha stink because he protect you, you mm -hmm. know, obviously here, your face is fucking cold and your feet are frozen and, you know, like really in apothermia. So I said, man, this shit make it fuck up with my performance. I prefer going yeah. in and maybe stay less time and be more effective and get out when I can't you know, handle anymore, then go in and just keep going, but being like, you know, this frozen mm -hmm. fingers and toes, you know, a face completely crystallized, you know, then, then that's, that's something that, you know, we don't do a lot, uh, uh, like adjusting our internal temperature or like you say, organs to what is outside. We try to cover more. That's what they do. The mom yeah. do. We get oh, tense goes, and small. Goes, no. If we just used to, I mean, we we were born with no clothes, and you know, two thousand years ago, we don't had anything. I think what the fucked up us was the time we start like covering us, you know, more and more and more. Oh instead yeah, of using a little, yeah, instead of using a little strip of whatever you know thing, now the more, more, more and more, and that's you know when when you know we go outside it's too hot for us it's too hot right and then when we go it's too cold for us it's too cold we just need to adjust the adapt on that because we keep temperature in the house high so you go out you go in the bank it's like you know you know freaking cold in there you know like a yeah. penguin you know work inside the bank and then you go out you freaking hot because you're constantly exposed to this back and forth you know excursion of temperature which your body uh, is a stress for your body, your brain constantly readjust, they adapt it, the, the internal thermometer. That's totally. a, that's the thing that fucked up us completely. Yeah, a lot of convenience. Uh, essentially allowing people to think first. I mean, the first thing that we think through is our sensation. So if we consider ourselves animals, or at least like where we were before we had fixed language or society, we were more animalistic or more like carnal in our, in our approach to the world. Um, those people were not delivering most of their action based off of practice routine. They were, although there was routine to a degree, it was survival. So in able to hear, see, smell, feel, there was a huge presentation of sensory fielding. And at this point in time, we don't realize it, but there's so many things distracting us. 
uh, electrical towers, uh, TVs, phones, every single thing that gives off a signal is something that we automatically pay attention to. It's almost like, hey, hey, that's what our brain's doing. And yeah. if we don't train that out, we're just going to always be bleeding energy wherever we're getting distracted. Well, evolution fucked up. <laughs> that's a matter of fact. You know, we stopped evolving whatever. and we started to yeah. conform. Yeah, we evolve around, you know, the new technology or, or whatever is more comfortable for us, easy, you know, it's nothing, it's hard to, to earn anymore, right? You know, and then now we become like sloppy and lazy because uh, we don't have to do things that we have, used to do. A simple right. task like, you know, go get water or go chop wood, get warm or cook things that you had to earn, go hunting. So we become so lazy. And obviously, you know, that with that comes also the fact that, you know, our, uh, we, we, we have more body fat, you know, there's a lot of, you know, bad things. Uh, they, they comes with evolution. We don't cook often. You see here in United States, in Italy, we cook all the time. Yeah. Here, I mean, the people house doesn't see never cooking, never. They totally. never cook. They just like take out food or microwave food. And that's something that need to come back. We need to uh, uh, just simple task like preparing the breakfast, sit at the table with your uh, with your loved one, talk. Simple things that you know. When I was a little kid, we used to do the fact eating at the table, not on the sofa, is something that is very important for a family. It's so fucking important. Yeah. What you did today? What are you gonna do? I was school little, you know stupid chat with your kids you know they don't interact anymore you know they eat fast and go away they don't wake up they wake up like three seconds before they have to leave no they don't wake up like they used to wake up early that's what we do in my house wake up early interact with each other talk have time you know for a conversation to wake up your brain and get ready you know for the rest of the day do other things you know People see, really, I go to people's house, sometimes it's so sad, eating on the sofa or in bed, or they don't cook, they never use the kitchen, brand new kitchen, big kitchen, like $80,000 kitchen, like with a brand new oven, you know, if you see my oven, it's full of splatter, actually today I just ordered a new one, it's coming today, because it was completely destroyed, you know, that's people need to really be more social, when we think of social, we think in society. People are not social in their own fucking house. Yeah. <laughs> How they can be social around them, you know? I mean, when I, when I go, sometimes I go in places, my wife always say, you fucking talk to anyone. Yeah, because I like to talk. That's my personality. That's my culture, you know, interact with people, talk, and just socialize with people. And people don't socialize anymore. Yeah, social wellness is probably the most uh, healing uh, process for most anyone. Uh you'll see that the longest living cultures in the world are the most social or they have the most, uh, um, I guess, intact social environment, like the family structure is intact, the friends are intact. Like you'll see uh, people in Spain, people in parts of Asia, like the Philippines, where they're basically living with their family until the end of their life. Uh, no, no, what, what, one, thing, uh, one thing, for instance, that uh, is very interesting for me about the U.S., that you see a lot of people with different, you know, uh, they come from different countries, you know, is it make, in Italy, all look the same people, you know, they look, you know, they're the same face, right, you know, white, you know, a lot of the nose, okay, maybe it's from Greece, because the nose is like that, whatever, right? But here you see people from all over the world, right? So for me, a very is a beautiful thing. And sometimes I see people, and nowadays, uh, you know, especially uh, uh, you know, lately, you know, last one year, one year or two, whatever you say is kind of inappropriate, or you you're always afraid to say too much, you know. Uh, so you have to be very careful the way you interact with people because they say, oh, why you say that? You know, it's so weird. And sometimes I do it because it's, it's my culture. For instance, the other day I was working out at the beach. And you know, it happened all the time. When I work out with my bag at the beach, people ask, hey, what's that? So there was this, this lady with other people, I don't know. And uh, she said, oh, what is that? Start explaining what it is, the product. And then uh, this lady had very, you know, exotic face. I don't know where she was from, you know, looked like, you know, Hawaiian, Samoan. Just, just the face was... 
And then I just came out like say, oh, you look so beautiful. But I saw that, I mean, I saw them like, you know, she said, oh, like, you know, like, what, what do you mean? You know, I mean, I, I, I feel As if you offended them? Because, no, I, yeah, for a second, you know, I saw the daughter like kind of, you know, moving away, like, oh, this is a weird, why you say that to my mom? Like things like that, right? But just say, because it was just the way she looked, she had a flower here. So I was trying to figure out and uh, she, the beginning, she she felt like kind of you know, oh okay, that's nice. But then after she kind of you know stepped back, like so, this is a weird, or you know, <laughs> I mean, why? You know, people cannot even compliment each other anymore. That you're gonna feel like you know you did something wrong. It's so weird, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a competitive nature about uh, our nation. Just like, uh, what do you want from me? What what are you trying to get? It's so weird, man. It's just, it's just the fucking weird things, you know, what happened in, in, in Italy. Thanks God, still like that. I mean, you can compliment people. You can say, you can kiss each other, hugging, you know, and we are a COVID spreader because we kiss and hug yeah. <laughs> all the time, you know. That's, you know, it's kind of fun. It's kind of awkward at the beginning, but fun when I go back that, you know, all my friend, hey, where you been? Kissing, hugging, squeezing, the man kissing the cheek, you know, each other, you know, touch faces. Even, you know, with my daughter, it's weird because my daughter is 10 years old. When we go to Italy, all my friends or people kind of I know, like this, my, oh, she's so beautiful. I give a kiss to her. And she feel like, oh, what the fuck? You know, like <laughs> nobody does that in America. You meet a little kid, it's like, you pedo. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's no, you need to say, oh, let's like, like, touch in her face. She's so beautiful. Oh, you want a cookie? You want something? You know, all the time happen. And for her, it's like going from zero to 100 <laughs> when we go yeah, there. For sure. But, you know, she understand now, you know, with age, that's just normal. That's what it is. You know, yeah. it's different society, have different rules or different kind of, you know, way to interact with each other. <laughs> Here we lost this. Uh, I mean, I don't know if ne they never had the United States. It used to be like that. I don't know. <laughs> when you was a kid, it used to be like that. People kind of, you know, be more. I don't know. My grandparents and... are like that. My family's like that, but they're not like, like from the U.S. So there's. Uh, yeah, I think it just depends on culture. I think people are very touchy feely in certain cultures, but definitely. I know we here. went we went from hydrocore to <laughs> <laughs> to this, but you know that's the fun part of the podcast. Always going totally. Through, like, yeah, I, I was just at a uh, an Indian wedding, and it, it was the same kind of culture shock where you see like, well, one you're seeing everybody dancing, like all generations are up. You, there were definitely some like really old people who were on the side and not participating as much, but uh -huh. it's the amount of energy and the amount of uh, expression and again touching amongst them it's like wow this this is something that if I had in my life growing up I probably would have like developed my I would have been nurtured a little bit more like I feel like I kind of would have liked this and I think that's probably true for almost everybody um, I'm sure your daughter probably gets a lot of benefit from experiencing that side of like human contact and how like loving it can be in this like um, familial or friendly way and it's just it's something that in sorry guys i i move a little bit because uh, i oh, yeah. go pick up my daughter to school but you know i'm still here but i'm just moving okay i'll okay. okay. <laughs> I'm still with you guys anytime soon yeah no, we're gonna finish it, up it's fun. you know i see this a lot it, it, it always you know i don't know, i feel like some people go to the extreme you know you see like the people that don't want to interact with each other like my wife always say oh you talk too close to people you know, like, yeah. <laughs> that's what we do. You, we talk close to each other, right? And and, uh, and uh, uh, or you see, like, kind of the the weird the weird side is like the more kumbalaya people. You know, they wag and they interact with the fe feminine or masculine uh, matter of your side of your body, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> they have to go to a stream when it will be so freaking simple. Just when you see a person hug her and kiss her, instead of, I mean, show that you are a freaking weirdo under, under a mushroom to, to do that, you know what I'm saying? It can swing a little too far one way. 
Um, to wrap up, <laughs> we, we were talking about um, how people are generally underexposed in their environment. And we were talking about that in terms of like heat and cold, but it, it also is a matter of force and the, the forces that you're exposed to or not exposed to when you're developing. And again, that's really what the hydrocore does is it, it gives this huge variety of forces that you can put on your body just by swinging this thing around or doing movements that you're just not going to get with like uh, a standard tool. Um, and, and it sounds like yeah. you've got like, more inventions in the works to kind of create those types of forces to, to expose people to them. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I mean, uh, uh, me, for me, uh, basically the first take on a hydro core because not understanding what I know now from experience and what, you know, uh, other people, you know, let me notice from using a hydro core uh, my first take say, okay, I want a product that I can travel with, you know, they can bring anywhere, you know, it's cool, you can adjust, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, that was my first thing, uh, uh, being outside more, like I, I like to travel a lot. So when I, I, all the time I went to Hawaii or traveling, you know, uh, uh, always found a way to work out and, you know, body weight stuff, but it's nice to have a tool to lift around, it's swing around, right? instead of going to this uh, shitty gym in the basement of hotels, just smell like mold, you know, sad, pathetic, you know, the same shit inside. I said, oh, I can bring like, you know, something with me. That was the first take. And, uh, but, you know, it, it's huge from some aspect, the fact that, you know, you go somewhere that you can be outside, you know, training outside. That's what I always tell to people. You know, what something interesting is, I mean, obviously related to hydrocore or not, because a lot of trainer during the COVID, during the pandemic, you know, obviously the gym closed and, you know, they were forced to find other way to make revenue. And what they did, they did like this boot camp outside. They've seen a lot of people going online or doing also boot camp outside. So training people at distance outdoor. And uh, it's fun, specifically here in San Diego, they say, man, I, I didn't realize I could do that. <laughs> In the sense that, man, the weather is fucking cool here. That's what I always did. Since I moved here to San Diego, always working out outside. So why I need to be in the freaking gym, you know? And uh, I always train my client outside, you know? And they say, man, I could do this like years, years ago instead of being in the gym. And now all the trainer I know that, you know, they were kind of dumped from gym that they closed or, you know, they were forced, you know, to close gym. They're just running boot camp or training client outdoor all the time. And, and I mean, why not? This, this, you know, go back to the fact that your body can of work out better, adjust better, you know, to the environment because you are into the environment. You're not in the gym. A failure, failure usually happens when you challenge yourself in a familiar environment. But the unfamiliar with my environment is not unfamiliar anymore. It's if you are always there. If you go out when it's cold, you go out when it's hot, you're always being outdoor. That's the best way. I see Nathan does that all the time. When you go to people home training, you know, he train people outdoor all the time. You know, people don't want to don't want to uh, be uh, challenged in an unfamiliar environment. You know, they always be like comfy at the gym, the AC. Uh, the I mean, you, you are in Canada, probably it's fucking cold there. It gets imagine if the people get very cold there. It gets but, pretty you know, bad. Yeah. yeah, I know. But people used to be in the cold way before the mall or the gym. True. You know, just I don't use it anymore. So they just like imagine how stronger, how better they are in a, an environment that is easy, right? It's simple, like a gym. So imagine like if I bad ass outdoor when it's like so fucking cold in the snow. I saw people doing that all the time. Imagine in the gym, they will fucking fly away from the hand. They will be so focused. You know, they'll be such a champ, right? Instead of just like, you know, and then the outside, no, there's no way I'm going to train outside. Even in San Diego, some client, you know, ah, can we train at the gym? I said, man. It's like, you know, so nice outdoor. Why you want to train at the gym? What's wrong with you? You know, it's it just, just a, a weird feeling. But again, you know, connecting to hydro core, that's, that's one, uh, one important thing that my 
client, you know, appreciate the fact they can bring in the bag outdoor. Uh, they can they can run with the bag. They can transport everywhere. A guy just, you know, sent me a picture. He was packing for vacation. He put the hydrocone inside his bag, uh, ready for travel. I say, man, I'm so happy. I mean, I, that's the thing I receive all the time. Uh, they say, man, you say my life, you know, when I go to vacation, when I travel for business, also businessmen, so many businessmen bringing the bag with them and then uh, using to work out. I mean, uh, that, that, that sound, think about, you know, TRX is, is, is probably, you know, an elastic band. They, those are the only tools you can really bring with you when you travel. Other than that, I don't know what you can bring with you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if yeah. there is other stuff you can bring with you. We're so the bag. A, uh, we're hitting some uh, service issues. I'm not sure if you are as well, Ben, but uh, I'm like, bit, not yeah. seeing face move. Uh, I think we're going to have to call it here, Mauricio. Okay. But thanks for coming on, man. That was great. Um, because I'm moving in the car. We'll link. Yeah. Kind yeah. of all, all your socials and stuff in the uh, in the description of the podcast. I think it's hydro.core on Instagram, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll be on the lookout for the, the new products. Yeah, appreciate my man. Yeah, if you come down to San Diego, let me know. We do some workout together. I'll let you test the product. I'll um, make him yeah. come down to us. Like, yeah, I just want to tell Mauricio. you guys, I'm, uh, I'm planning in a, uh, a retreat in Italy, May 2023. The name of the retreat is Human Fit. Will be six days retreat in Italy. They were going to have a different modality of training, either core, you know, rope flow, landmine, a lot of fun stuff. It will be big. So I will post some stuff in the future if you guys want it. If you're interested, we can talk about you know again in another podcast. I can tell you more about this retreat. Bitchin, I'm interested in it. We Italy in May sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm <laughs> you guys have a wonderful rest of your day thank you Mauricio for showing up uh, we'll yeah thank you, you guys thanks Mauricio there you go